Hello, hello. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to my sewing room. I'm Stephanie, and I am going to talk a little bit about sewing and a little bit about life, as I do every Friday. Uh, I want to say that Friday Sews is super fun, and there's a lot of people who also do a Friday video about life and sewing. Just put in hashtag Friday Sews, and you'll see. Make the rounds. I do. Super fun. Super fun. You're going to make some great sewing friends and sewing buddies. So a little sewing, a little life. Let's start with sewing. What have I been up to? Well, I finished the jacket I talked about the last two or three Fridays, and so it's done, and I'm super happy with it. I'm going to show it to you in a review coming very soon. It's already filmed, and now I just have to you know, work my magic, put it together. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, you guys, that you may not know. Some of us who are also other YouTubers, we talk about it, like, how do you do this? How do you do that? It's a lot. There's a lot that goes on with it. And so on my um, jacket, I decided to show me making it again. And I don't know why, because it's awfully hard. <laughs> so I have all these little clips I'm hoping to put together and if that part doesn't work out, at least I will show the jacket and what I think of the pattern. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna belabor that. I've talked about that a lot. So just stay tuned. It's coming. It's really coming. Uh, so I just had this hankering for a while to make a pin cushion, and I wanted to tell you a sweet story about treasured pin cushions before I show you my adorableness right here. May I tell you a little story, please? Let me grab some of my treasures, okay? These are my pin cushions that I use, and I have them sitting right over there. And um, I kind of thought, oh, I really want something that goes with my sewing room, but uh, it's really hard to give up treasures. Treasures. These are all treasures. Uh, I'm going to save my most e um, emotional or sentimental one for last, uh, but I'll start with this one. This one is so cool. I've used it and used it and used it. Isn't it cute? It's got a little uh, rose in the middle. Love the fabric. It's kind of felt on the bottom. It was kind of got some lint on it. I got this for a prize. I won this in a prize on something that was called Christmas Around the World. It's been forever, like 10 years ago, but it I was a blogger. So before I was a vlogger video, I was a blogger. I had a vlog called Lulu's Cottage, and I did talk about sewing and life on there as well. And it's still there. If you want to see it, I'll put a link in the description box. Um, but there was this thing that somebody put together to help these bloggers who all did arts and crafts and all kinds of things to uh, spread the word about them and share with each other. So everybody talked about this Christmas around the world on their blog and offered a prize. And I did this like two or three years in a row. I gave away a prize, I made something. It had to be homemade, it had to be something you made. And I entered all of them. And uh, it, the first year it was like a couple hundred. I entered all of those. The next year, I like took days, I entered like, hundreds of these contests and I won probably 15 maybe 20 prizes oh my gosh oh one of them is Annabelle see that beautiful doll oh you can't see her I'm gonna get her Annabelle she sits up on the top shelf I won her in the Christmas around the world she's handmade handcrafted beautiful doll just love her okay Annabelle you go sit over there for a moment uh, I want some jewelry I want some art things Oh, so many cool, so many cool things from all over the world. Like, um, just all over the world, I got prizes. Israel and uh, somewhere in um, Eastern Europe, England, I, I, all over in the United States, I won prizes. So that was fun. So this was one of them. I think her name was Betty. I don't remember. Like I said, it was 10 years ago, but it's probably on that blog. Um, so this is a treasured pincushion. I love it. Uh, and this one my friend Nancy made out of a top of a mason jar and she made this for me gosh at least 20 25 years ago and uh, every time she sees it she laughs a little because she remembers it but it, it's treasured it, it's a gift from a friend so treasure and this one came out of my grandma's house it all also has a little music I don't want to play it too loud but it has to each his own, made in Switzerland. So it plays music, and I only use it for needles. So it always sits over there. And this one 
is what made me want to go on this journey. So this I made well over 30 years ago. And what it is, is I did get some things when my grandma passed away, I got some things out of her house. And um, lots of doilies, dishes, knickknacks, all kinds of cool stuff. And I was so happy to have anything that belonged to her. She was very special to me. And uh, it's funny because I was thinking about it before I started this video and I, I have to say, I really did not see my grandma a lot when I was growing up because they lived far away. And uh, so it was a special occasion. But for some reason, I just loved her so much. I just loved her and grandpa too, grandma and grandpa. I think uh, as a grandparent, they are my ideal to live up to. I just love them. And uh, it's funny because she wasn't like the sweetie kind of grandma. She was a little crotchety and, you know, she would yell at you to pick up your coat or whatever, but there was just something about her that just, I just loved her. She had a little trailer. They came to visit, a Shasta, and I loved that trailer and I loved going in it. She fed us homemade applesauce, my sister and I, and it just was like being in a dollhouse. And I wanted a trailer ever since that is what started my trailer journey. And, um, loved her house. I don't know. I just loved her. She made Swedish hotcakes. I make Swedish hotcakes. Love it. Just love it. She had a stove that you could lift up the burner and throw garbage in and it would burn because it was wood burning. And guess what? <laughs> I took that stove. They, they didn't want it. So I took it out of the house and I, I've got a U-Haul and brought it home. I have it out in my shed. I don't know why. I had to have it. So I got a pin cushion from her house and it it's not this one. It was falling apart and sand was coming out. And I thought, why is sand in there? I mean, I didn't know. So I thought I don't want to lose it. So I, I made this, I just made this. It's like felt, some kind of felt and a trim. And then I poured her sand in here. So this is actually inside is grandma's sand from her pin cushion. I don't think the fabric is in there, but I'm not opening it to find out because I don't even know how I made this, but I've had it ever since. So there it is, Grandma's sand inside this pin cushion. And I just didn't figure out why sand was in there. I have thought about it, and so I Googled it once, you know, we were able to Google because, you know, 30 years ago you couldn't do that. And uh, sand sharpens the needles or sharpens the pins, some people say. And there's a certain kind of sand that you get for this. And then some people say, controversially that, you know, you don't want that sand because it'll make things rust if you're in a humid climate and I'm not. So it never bothered my pens at all. It's always been in here. And so I thought if I ever made my own pen cushion, I would want sand like that one because I love that. I love this too, but this sharpens your pens, I think. So I, let me hold on. Let me show you something. So I purchased this. It is um, Emery Sand for pen cushions. So I bought that probably on Amazon and um, it's just sand and it's supposed to emery, like emery board, like filing your notes, supposed to be good for your pen. So I used that and I funnel from my kitchen and I made my own pattern. I just made a little square of the shape I wanted. I knew the shape I wanted. So I've I had started out with two pieces, one bigger and one smaller, because you want to make an inside sack. And I made that out of a sheet. Y'all, y'all, we don't say y'all in California. <laughs> My mother's Southern. I could say y'all. You guys is what we say. You guys. There's no gender to guys. It's just you guys is everybody. Uh, so I use sheets for everything. I have sheets for pressing in my iron station. I just have sheets for scraps, for, for muslins, whatever. I have sheets. And um, this sheet was my inner sack. So there's a sack on the inside and you want it to be a high thread count. I've Googled this. And so that the sand doesn't seep through. And this is pretty, it's not nothing getting through here. But I laid it on a pin cushion and it seemed like it was gonna be no problem to stick a pin through. And for my outer, I wanted to use some of these fat quarters I've been collecting. Isn't this adorable? So pretty. It's just so pretty. So I folded the fabric in half. I sewed up a, a, two sides. Um, I poured in my sand and then I got it over to the machine and sewed up the other side. 
And then I did the same with this fabric. And then I inserted the full bag of sand and then I turned it in and I hand stitched it and that's this one. And one of the things I did to this one, which didn't turn out to be a good idea, it didn't really matter, was this is so thin that when I, sometimes when I pick it up, a pin can be sticking through. <laughs> It'll get you. It'll get you. So I thought, I don't want that. So I'm going to prevent that. So I put a little piece of cardboard that was in this fat quarter uh, on the bottom. But you know what? It's a little bigger and the pin doesn't actually go all the way through. So I didn't really need to do that. And I didn't on my subsequent ones. But I started thinking, how cute is this? But what if I decorate it? I mean, I'm kind of into decorating, as you can see. And I thought, this is why I want to make the pin cushions is so I have them at each station. I have a serger station and two sewing machines and here. So I really would like four, but I made three. And so then I would always have a pin cushion instead of constantly moving pin cushions around. Although you still move them because you always got to bring a full one over when one's empty. You just keep rotating, right? So this one I made with a piece of cardboard in the bottom. And then this one came next and I wanted a bow. I actually thought about doing bows on both ends, but I really like it with just one. And because, I see more strings, because this is the end that I sewed closed, it was easy to get the, the bow in there and not as easy on this end. And I think it's cuter this way anyways. So that one is my bow. And then I thought, well, I just want to make them all bows. <laughs> I love bows. But then I thought a ruffle would be cute. Oh my goodness, more threads. You know how it is when you're, oh, it's from the needle. Okay, isn't that cute, a little ruffle and a monkey. Oh, I love this fabric so much. It's so cute. I've used it for different things. I made masks with it when that first started. So for the kids, they were so cute. But I love this fabric and I have just scraps. So it's perfect for scraps. You know, if you've got scraps, why not make some pin cushions? So that's what I've been up to. It was super fun, super fun. On another sewing note, I did get some fabric for a jacket that I'm going to do the review on. Um, I talked about that last week and oh, this fabric is amazingly beautiful. It's black and um, should I do a sneak peek on a video that's coming? Okay, hold on. I'm back. I made this. Oh, it's so beautiful. And I love this fabric so much. Okay, this isn't glamorous. How cute is this? So I'm gonna do the review on this. I made a blue one and this black one. So I went to Joann's to get fabric just for this. And I found this, it says it's 12. And uh, it's like in the suiting department area. Just love this fabric. And while I was there, I saw this fabric. And I had to have it. Actually, I do believe it's the second time I had my eye on this and I thought, I keep seeing this, I have to have this. So I bought it and I was getting it cut out and they were ooing and aahing over it too. Isn't it gorgeous? So Joanne calls this a silky print. I don't know the content. I do believe I have it somewhere. So it's probably um, polyester, but just look at this. Isn't this beautiful? It's just gorgeous. Now here's something cool. It's hard to tell even which side is the right side because that wasn't it. This is it. No, this is it. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm thinking I want to look through my patterns and say, sometimes you're making something and you think, um, it really needs to be fabric that looks good on both sides. Somehow part of the inside is going to show. I would want to use this because it's so pretty on both sides. I'm thinking something flowy and springy for spring. I just love this fabric. It's not Easter colors, but could this be my Easter dress? I don't know. I just love it so much. Let me go put my jacket back. <laughs> okay, now that I showed you, let me pop up a picture of the pattern. It's a Simplicity trench coat, and I absolutely adore it. I've made it twice, and I'm going to do a review on it, so I'm not going to talk too much about it and tell you too much about it. But let me just suffice it to say I loved it. Love that second pattern, second one especially. So that's it. I'm just so excited about these. <laughs> Move all that out of the way. Aren't they cute? Oh, I love cuteness. I just love cuteness. Oh my gosh, I love these. I think I want to make some more.
just kind of like the binders. I just want to make more because it's so fun. Um, they were super easy to make and um, they're going to come in handy. And I actually went on Amazon and ordered some cute pens to go in them. So I don't have a whole lot going on in the home front. We're still struggling to get a trip to the ocean in the books because hubby's been really busy, but we both want to get away. So that's on the horizon. I talked to my granddaughter this, not, okay, we don't talk anymore. Nobody talks. Do you, do you talk to anybody? Uh, when I say talk, I mean texting. So I randomly text my granddaughters just to stay in their life because that's easy, right? So uh, they don't always text back right away, but who cares? When they text back, they text back. So she's pregnant and the baby's due in June, I believe. And it's just neat to hear her excitement. She's, they're just so excited, her and her little hubby. They're just so adorable and excited. And um, I'm excited for them and it's neat to hear from them. So I've got baby on the brain and uh, maybe some projects for that. And my next sewing project, I really wanna find some super cute tops. And I am looking for things that are embellished. I just want some like really cute collar, shoulders, neck treatments, sleeve treatments, something embellished, something fun and different. Not just like this, normal. I mean, the, the, the only thing that's great about this is the color of the fabric, but I want something that's got something going on. Do you got any great patterns that have some embellishment? on them, the tops, maybe even a tunic or a dress, but really tops. I don't have enough tops. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm kind of searching and um, I'm enjoying my fabric. Did you see I did my little fabric video where I brought out my summer fabric? It's very inspiring looking at this fabric. I'm ready to make some stuff. So kind of on the lookout for some cool patterns and definitely waiting for another sale. If you guys hear of another sale, please let me know because I've got some patterns I want, but I'm not going to pay until they're a dollar because that's too nice, right? So I hope you're all having a great weekend. I hope you're enjoying your day. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for stopping by and having this little chat with me. And I will see you next time. Please subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Leave me a comment and I will see you next time. Bye now.